Look who's here! All our fans are out there! Okay, let's go for the follow-up for the small lockbacks was Williams Knife Life's um, medium lockback collection. Once again, I'm going to just stick with single-bladed knives. Um, in this case, they're going to all be between the length of uh, 3 and 1 eighths of an inch up to 4.5 or 4.5 inches. So that's the length I'm going with with medium lockbacks. And again... Um, a single blade variety uh, and you see here there is a mix of traditional as well as modern folders and had I known we were going to be doing a medium lockback open tag I would have saved my dragonfly for this video because I would actually consider this well it falls into the parameters of a medium lockback according to what I just said because this is three and three eighths of an inches long uh, as opposed to being under three inches, which is what I was having for my small lockbacks. And like I said, you might see it uh, in an upcoming video. And so now you have my Dragonfly, which should have been a medium, but I called it a big small. And when you consider the blade length on the Dragonfly, uh, the actual cutting edge and everything of just... Uh, inch and three quarter i guess in that theory you could say that this is a small lockback but you get a full four fingers on there or at least i do once you use the four finger toil which is what i really like about the dragonfly any case let's move on to my medium lockback collection Okay, I'm not going to devote a lot of time on some of these simply because either I've recently done a video on them or, um, well, other people have already talked about them. And one of them being right here in the middle, the, uh, the Rough Rider French Tickler this is really a nice knife. Um, a lot of people have already commented on it. It is a locking toothpick with a lock back, which is pretty cool. Uh, comes in at four and a half inches and it's a really cool knife it's got a really nice uh turkish clip going on with it nice saber grind everything about this knife is pretty cool and like i said other people have already talked about this so um all i can say is uh if you can grab one grab one because they are pretty cool i believe they're out of production but they are still available in the back here is a pretty cool knife too if you're in the hawk bills and i actually use this knife quite often because it is a lock back and uh it was dirt cheap i think it was about six or seven bucks from right edge 448 stainless steel blade and it's got a lock on the back as opposed to that liner lock that some of them have so when you grab that handle nothing is in the way you got your toil up there to prevent you from sliding up on the uh, hawkbill blade so it's a really good knife i use it for scoring uh, uh, drywall and other things and cutting it and uh, i've also used it for cutting carpeting and everything else uh, i added this myself this uh the uh the little clevis on the back but the cool thing about it was it was a lockback hawkbill and you just don't see many of them again by right edge now this is really a nice one uh it's like the bow razor or whatever um and uh this is a brian willoy design and it is what the um i just did a video on this too the rr2003 uh razor and it's just got some really terrific lines it's already out of uh production and it's also out of stock at uh, smkw but you can find it around again you got the forward finger toil really nice blade going on with it and a good lock on the back so very strong lock on the back and it just looks so cool so this is really one of my uh, favorite recently purchased uh, Rough Rider knives and I'm not a person who really cares that much for razors but in the case of this one because of the bone and the shape of the handle and the wonderful bolsters and everything that long bolster in front I really really like this knife and uh, I don't know there you have that one oh, let's put that over here too what can I say about this knife that I have not already said before uh, I mean this is the frost 
German steel, no surgical steel, Vulture 2. We know who he is ripping off when he made it. He was ripping off Spyderco. You got the forward finger toil. You got the extra uh, added bonus of a blade that wobbles. Uh, cheap plastic handles. It's just riveted together. Yet, I've actually used this goofy knife to baton through a 2x4. And I was actually pounding on the back of the blade with a hammer. A, even focusing right here on the eagle eye portion of the Vulture 2. And uh, it held up perfectly. And it, I was able to baton through wood. Uh, cheap 420 steel. You can sharpen it up pretty well. Uh, the action is not the smoothest in the world, but what do you expect for a buck or two, maybe three tops? And actually, <laughs> for the price you pay, you get a pretty decent knife. So he calls it all sorts of different things, but I tell you what, uh, for the price that you're paying for it and the fact that, uh, I don't know, I'm sold on this thing. I shouldn't be. I should just say this is a piece of garbage, throw it away. But uh, it works. It does what it's supposed to do. And it is one of those knives that I think is uh, is a knife that gets uh, younger people addicted to knives. And then they start collecting knives because of something like the uh, Vulture 2. Now, this one here, this was given to me by Patty's Potato Peelers. Um, and... I like the eagle eye in the front there. I think it's G10 handles, but it's my brother, and it's the uh, 1502G, and I believe this is in 440C, yep. And uh, it's like the the typical what you expect in a um, lockback uh, folder. There's, you know, especially a medium lockback. The exact size that people would expect and everything else you see right there coming in at four and a quarter inches so right under the four and a half inch mark you got a blade that is uh three inches long um and two and three quarter inches with the cutting edge this would actually be legal in england if it wasn't for the fact that it was a lock back and you also got the wonderful uh bird's eye rivet up front yeah just you got your lanyard hole in the back and a really positive lock back and notice those red liners and everything just a really good knife uh, i haven't done anything with it i really need to take it out and beat it on a few things and see how well it does but if patty's potato peelers gave it to me then i know it's going to be a quality knife he wouldn't have given it to me otherwise so there's that one um Let's go with this one. This one, I don't know where this came from or how I ended up with it or anything else. I don't know if someone gave it to me or um, if I found it in a box or, or what, but I uh, didn't have a clue what it was until I opened it up and it said there, Sear Stainless USA 95413. And this kind of reminds me of the... Uh, knives that case makes i don't know if that would be it or not i can't even remember what it's called but it's about the same size see there are three and three quarter inches long and uh just a typical spear point blade or a drop point blade whatever you want to call it two and three quarter inches long with a two and a half inch cutting edge um just exactly what you expect a, a inexpensive utility knife but notice how it's set there. It's, it's like the perfect pocket dropper. I have no idea why they have this little brass plate there. Uh, it's on the one side. I guess it's so you could have your initials inscribed into it or something like that. But uh, yeah, not a bad little knife. You got some uh, um, rough edges up here in the front so your hand can grab onto it with your finger or something. You know, if you want to cut. I suppose you could actually use this for skinning and everything else. It's just a... Uh, Nice little uh, medium lockback. Now, William's Knife Life had his uh, Robin 2. I have the Meadowlark 2. I got it in stainless steel, and you can see I've definitely carried it a bit. I wish I would have grabbed this in like a black G10 or some other kind of G10 handle 
or even just the some kind of lightweight FRN or whatever because the stainless steel this is really a heavy knife for the pocket uh, because of all that stainless steel uh, the good thing is is because of the weight of the knife you can easily do the old grab the finger hole here and drop this thing open because of how heavy the handle is um, you got the forward finger toil which is what I really like on it. I don't know if I mentioned this. This is the Metal Lark 2. Uh, and it reminds me very much of the uh, Para 3. You see here the blade length is two and a half inches, or the cutting edge of the blade is two and a half inches. I guess you could say the overall length of it is about two and seven eighths of an inch. You got the bird hole up front instead of the spidey hole. Uh, and you got the lock back in the middle there. Uh, left or right hand uh, clip carry. Um, and obviously tip up or tip down. Right now it is set for left hand tip down carry. Uh, and it's mainly because of where I was actually carrying the knife, which was in the back pocket. And I actually wanted to just be able to pull the knife out with the, um, when I would be pulling it out, I would be grabbing it with the, um, with the finger hole. And so then when I pull it out, I could just flick it down and have it open. So that's why I had it as a tip down carry instead of a tip up carry. Um, haven't carried it for a while simply because it's so heavy. Um, instead I have my uh, Para 3 which is almost the exact same size um, and um, easier to open and everything else. You know I can flip it open and it's got the uh, drop chetty capabilities which this one doesn't. But the Para 3 is not a lockback. Well, in theory it is, but it's a liner lockback. Now, next up is the uh, Choctaw, and this is by Frost. This is a Steel Warrior Choctaw, uh, and what they call pearl, but it's got a real thick acrylic over it, and a very thin slab of pearl underneath there, and uh, a really funky handle. Now, I've got a large and a small one of these. I'll, when I do the large lockbacks, I'll show the large one. Uh, but you see here, the small one comes in at three and three quarter inches. Can you see there? Three and three quarter inches. And open it up. It's got a blade, big fat blade, that is just over two and a half inches with a cutting edge that is two and a quarter inches. And I tell you what, um, after having both the large and the small, I tell you, the, the, the smaller one, which would be a medium lockback, actually feels better in the hand and you can if you really want to choke up on it here um, me personally i don't want to put my finger that close to the blade i don't trust it as much because of the way this is rounded if this was um wound rounded in a similar fashion that you see on the metal lock 2 there then you could have a nice forward finger toil but i don't feel that's a proper forward finger toil so i don't like to grab it there but from back here, you actually can get a good grip on the knife and you have a lot of force to push down on. And you got really a good uh, finger guard here um, in the front of the Choctaw. And obviously when you close it, the blade is hidden by that. So it is really an interesting copperhead style knife with kind of a funky handle. But uh, once you carry it a little bit, it's like, hey, you know what, that's not bad after all. And like I said, I actually prefer the smaller one over the larger one um, because it just feels better in the hand. Uh, we're down to, what, four knives now. I'm going to grab this one and get it out of the way because this is probably, and I have said this many times, uh, it is definitely my favorite Rough Rider lockback. I'll tell you that right now. And it's because of the Burlwood handle, the wonderful long bolster. Uh, this is the 078. It's got a wonderful satin finish on the blade. And it's just got one of the coolest looking blades I've ever seen with that uh, harpoon shape. You see the swedge going on up here a little bit. Not as clear up here on this side because of the, 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 the uh, nail neck. They could have left the nail neck out of this thing completely because it is so easy to open. You can actually kind of pinch it open a little bit like so and give it a flick and it will flip open because uh, there is absolutely, uh, well, it's not a real strong back spring. 
um, lineup is adequate. I've got about four of these, and lineup is always right about there. It's not perfect, but it isn't bad. But they just look great with the uh, burl wood handles and everything. And these are fashioned after um, uh, the Moki knives out of uh, Seki, Japan. Uh, the only difference is this has a really cool looking blade. And uh, the blade length, as you can see, uh, two and three quarters of an inch with a cutting edge that is about two and a half inches long. And uh, the knife overall length when closed is right at four inches, if you can see there, four inches. And that front bolster is about an inch and an eighth. So it is really kind of stylized after a Barlow, but it's just got some of the coolest lines I've ever seen on a uh, lockback. And it just feels really good in the hand. And you can, you know, do that and do that with that harpoon blade. It's just a really fantastic knife. Definitely my favorite of everything that's on the table here. And here we have the Moonshiner. And this is a Taylor brand. Now, uh, Rough Rider did something similar to this. But they had like an outdoor scene with a white-tailed deer on it and everything. But as you can see here, this is the Moonshiner. You see the moonshiner way over there, and then you got the barrels and everything else is still over here and everything, somewhere hidden in the woods. And then when you open up that blade, it says moonshiner on it. And uh, not the most typical knife that you're going to see. It is definitely a lockback. You got two big brass slabs going on with it. You got the finger toil or finger hole up front, so you don't have to worry about slipping anywhere. Then the knife just drops in your hand. And uh, I guess you could hold it like that. And you got this uh, finger hole. So even if it's closed. You got it closed. I guess you could fit your finger through there. And use that as a brass knuckle if you wanted to. I probably wouldn't because of the knife blade in there. But uh, open it up like that. You got good purchase there. You got a nice... Uh, finger hole there so you could definitely stab down without worrying about um, um, your fingers or hand sliding down on the blade and same thing with going forward you got a really good uh, purchase on the knife blade so if you needed to stab or something you can definitely stab with this especially with it being a lock back and uh, just uh, not something you see every day and uh, really kind of uh one of my more interesting mid mid-size lockback knives and uh glad i have it and you see there taylor cutlery surgical japan and, and the overall length of it right at what you could say four inches or three and seven eighths at whatever way you want to call it okay that leaves us with these two stilettos um and there, there's a little bit of a story behind this one. This one is uh, the last, the most recent stiletto I picked up. Um, it is by Kissing Crane. It has uh, really nice elk horn handles or stag handles. Um, brass bolsters. Uh, and, well, nice blade. Rocks the way it's supposed to. So you've got two stops before it gets all the way open, which is the way most stilettos will do. And uh, Kissing Crane again. And there we have the KC-47. And overall length of this one is uh, 8 inches. And that's usually the way people measure stilettos for some reason. They'll, they'll talk about them in the overall length of 8 inches. And 8 inches, really, when it, when it comes to a stiletto, and that's kind of a small stiletto. Um, I'm throwing it in with my mid-sized knives because, well... Uh, because of the restrictions that I had. And you see, this is four and a half inches. How should I put it? It is right at the top of the size of my medium lockbacks or mid-size lockbacks. But it's really um, a... This is where you, you end up with a big, small stiletto. A four and a half inches closed stiletto would be kind of a small stiletto, just just barely reaching into the medium size stiletto. Uh, you have a blade on here that comes in at uh, three and a half inches and uh, three inches with a cutting edge. 
a really nice knife though by Kissing Crane. Yeah, it's made in, I believe this one was, yeah, it was made in Taiwan. Um, the blade rocks the way it's supposed to. You notice one, two, and then three for the lock. And it is a lock back. You got the bump back here so you can push down, which uh, raises the, uh, the little lock up here, the latch up there, and freeze the pin on the blade so you can close it. So, and that's the way lockbacks used to work a lot, uh, especially with stilettos. And then this one, well, this one has a bit of a story. I have told it before, but it is definitely a small stiletto coming in at just, just barely four inches. Really more like three and seven eighths inches closed. It is made in Italy. Um, see there, stainless Italy. And that's the only marks on it. Um, and overall length for it is just seven inches. Uh, so the blade is right at three inches long uh, with a two and a half inch cutting edge. And um, so in theory, uh, if, I were be, if I were talking about just stilettos, I would classify both of these as small, uh, small stilettos, but they fall into... Um, the parameters that I gave here as a uh, medium lockback. Uh, this one is kind of interesting to me at least because uh, this is really the first knife I ever owned. Uh, it's not the first knife I ever bought, it's the first knife I ever owned. I found this knife in my high school uh, back when I was in uh, ninth grade. Someone had dropped it in the, in the uh, hallway actually on the stairs you see the handle here was broken so I repaired the handle and I've had this knife ever since I carried it all the way through high school I carried it into um, college even and this was really the the first knife that was ever truly my knife um, and not in the world's greatest shape the second um, lock which should be right there um, I guess I need to tighten it up a bit uh, but it will lock in that place. And there you have it, my very first uh, knife I ever owned. And uh, I found it. Um, be a while before I actually bought one. And yeah, it's uh, seen better days. You can see definitely a gap there in the spring. But it has brass liners, nickel silver bolsters, and a uh, stainless blade. And it was made in Italy. And it's... Uh, a genuine Italian stiletto and so there you have it there's my um, medium lockbacks even though these are really two small stilettos let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at knife chats with the pies I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave so please uh, remember that Give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.